Hello, welcome to this series of short lectures on the subjects of statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. These lectures in their original form were made for use in Industrial Engineering 361 at Iowa State University. We're now making them available not only to the students of that course, but to the public for educational purposes. Uh, we're glad to have you along. Let's begin by thinking a bit about what the word quality means uh, and consider its connection to statistics. If we're going to talk about statistical quality assurance, statistical process improvement, statistical quality control, uh, we need some kind of understanding of what those words mean and how they're related. It might be helpful to think about several illustrative cases. Consider comparing a luxury car to an economy car. Consider comparing a four-star restaurant to a fast food store, or a chauffeur limo service to a city bus service. You could ask the question, is there any sense in which every one of those concepts, businesses, products uh, could be considered a, a quality service or a quality product or a quality business. Is it possible to think about a luxury car and an economy car as both being quality automobiles? Well, there are facets of the colloquial meaning of the word quality uh, that allow that because the colloquial meaning of quality has at least an a facet having to do with appropriateness of a product, that is, the appropriateness of the features of a product. There are different kinds of goods and services. A luxury car is not an economy car, uh, but there are contexts in which either might be desirable. And there's also the, con the uh, facet of the word quality that has to do with getting what one expects, that is, having small variation from what is intended or expected. Uh, we'll find as we go along in this series of lectures that variation uh, is almost always uh, synonymous or close to lack of quality. Uh, so you'll hear me say things like variation is unquality. A common definition of quality is fitness for use, and that has two, these two main dimensions. Uh, there's the dimension of quality of design that's concerned with appropriateness and cleverness of features, and there's the dimension of quality of performance that's concerned with small variation from what's intended, uh, what's, what's, what's set down as a design. It's the second of these that is the main concern in a course like this, and we will focus not on quality of design, but more on quality of conformance. That's not to say quality of design is unimportant, that's just to say it's not the subject of this series of lectures. Consider a pair of illustrative cases regarding quality of conformance. Let's think for a second about a city bus service and quality of conformance. What one wants from a bus service primarily is that the buses run on schedule, that there is small variation from what is intended, what is planned, what is promised. Uh, so it's fairly obvious in this service context that quality of conformance is an important concept. There's a second case. Uh, let's talk briefly about uh, a manufacturing example. Uh, relating to the rollout of the Ford Escort. 
Uh, this by now is a somewhat old example, but it's a very enlightening one. When Ford first was going to market the Escort, the company needed more transaxles than they had capacity than it had capacity to build in the U.S. So an offshore plant was set up to manufacture half the transaxles. Ford quickly found, as they began to market and sell escorts, that there were, that some of the escorts had noisy transaxles. And what they found was, what the company found, was that uh, most often the noisy transaxles were ones that were made in Batavia, Ohio, not ones that were made offshore. What was the source of that? Well, they tried, the company tried to uh, understand that by taking 15 transaxles from each plant and breaking them down and making measurements on criti critical dimensions of each of those transaxles. They found that every single measurement that they made, both on the noisy and on the quiet transaxles, were in engineering specifications. But the dimensions on the transaxles made offshore were uniformly almost dead on target. They were, uh, they had very little variation from the ideal value. Uh, this is a context in which uh, variation from the ideal in a manufactured product simply makes the product not work as well as if it is, as if it is manufactured as designed. Uh, both of these cases illustrate the importance of quality of conformance. Let's then think about what statistics has to do with quality, uh, quality assurance, what the statistics have to do uh, with process improvement. In order to address that, let's review what statistics is about. Uh, statistics is concerned with collecting data, summarizing data, drawing inferences from data, and doing that in a context where one recognizes the absolute uh, unavoidable nature of variation. There are in this definition two vital words. There is the word data and there is the word variation. Uh, the connection between quality and statistics is that if one is going to assure quality one must use empirical information. One must collect data, one must make measurements, uh, and therefore one is going to do statistics. Further, there's an important link between the notion of variation, measuring it, understanding where it comes from, uh, and hopefully getting rid of it. Uh, there's a very important link between variation uh, and quality, and the fact that statistics is a is a is a tool in understanding variation and describing variation, again makes it essential uh, for our fundamental goal of statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. Like it or not, a course like this a series of lectures like this uh, must have to do with the subject of statistics. I tell engineering students that the question is not are you going to do statistics? The question is are you going to do statistics well? Uh, we want to learn how to do statistics well for purposes of quality assurance, and process improvement. Let's think for a bit about what are some features of the environment 
in which the technical material of these lectures is going to be applied. The environment includes a process orientation. It includes a customer focus. It includes an emphasis on continuous improvement. And there are many uh, fads, buzz, buzzwords, emphases, programs that come and go in this realm uh, that uh, are part of the scene that really have to do with just reinventing uh, the application of good logic, data collection, uh, and the scientific method uh, to process improvement. Let me talk for a second about uh, a real example that, that illustrates very well uh, the importance of the first of these emphases, the, the a process orientation to a series of lectures like this. It was once shown a clean room and an electronics uh, company. Clean room was, is, a, is a facility in which integrated circuit chips are manufactured. I was shown this clean room and told that sometime earlier, perhaps a year before I was shown the uh, facility, uh, that clean room was yielding a 14% yield. 86% of the chips made there were simply junked. They were no good. At the time, there were 80 people working in that room, and that room was the bottleneck for a very important product of this of this company. Uh, they, the, the company had to have chips from that room in order to uh, ship product. Uh, the major method of ensuring quality at that time was making stuff and sorting it, uh, sorting good chips from bad chips. The company went to work on what was going on in that clean room, and some time later, perhaps a year later, the yield had increased from 14% to 65%, not by magic, but by hard, good, hard, careful, logical, data-based process improvement, good engineering, uh, and Instead of 14%, there was 65% yield. That's like getting several new clean rooms with no capital investment uh, and cutting down on, on waste uh, uh, was a great result. Instead of 80 people working the room, it only required eight. That's a huge savings in labor cost. There was plenty of capacity once the process was improved and was running appropriately. Uh, there was still a need to sort good chips from bad chips, but the, the production of good chips was the fundamental means of producing uh, product, not sorting good from bad. This process orientation uh, sometimes uh, emphasizes uh, internal customers. So there are customers before the final or end customer in a, uh, in a modern uh, business. Uh, from this point of view, everything I do has, has inputs and outputs. Uh, I, have, I have vendors, I have customers, uh, and I want to do my work in such a way that everyone downstream from me is satisfied, is able to use what I produce. There is also an emphasis, though, on in customer. And so there's a, a discipline, a uh, popular discipline called quality function deployment, for example, that's aimed at getting everyone in an organization focused on uh, satisfying an end customer. 
Uh, quality function deployment is just one of many varieties of programs and jargon that have to do with uh, logical data-based process improvement. Uh, some of you who are listening have heard about TQM, Total Quality Management. Uh, some of you know about ISO 9000, have heard about Six Sigma, have taken courses in quote-unquote lean. Uh, there are many uh, such emphases and, and, and programs, or there's, there's much such jargon, that surround this realm of quality assurance process improvement. The course textbook, uh, Statistical Quality Assurance Methods for Engineers, uh, by Vardaman and, and Job, has in it a six-step process-oriented quality assurance cycle uh, listed as its table 1.1. Uh, that table, that process assurance, uh, quality assurance cycle, uh, can function not only as the intellectual framework for this set of lectures, but it can function as a, a guide to how to approach a, a real uh, process improvement project. I've listed here for you uh, the steps in that uh, in that process-oriented quality assurance cycle. Uh, I will point out here that the main point at which this series of lectures will depart from what's in that textbook is around here, where we will say more about uh, measurement and uh, metrology than is in the original version of Vardaman and Job, uh, but it's available to you uh, in a uh, revision in progress of the book that, that's in PDF form on the Analytics Iowa LLC uh, website. Uh, I encourage you to have a look at this table, uh, think through uh, what's what's in the table uh, and I will sign off here and be back with lecture two directly.